meeting of the planning board and it is a workshop uh, ordinarily we are not televised on our, uh, <laughs> workshop sessions because we like to have an informal frank discussion and have lots of uh, exchange of information uh, completed the work necessary in seeking permission to erect temporary portables and classrooms at the Concoke site. Attached, please find the following. One, a letter from Bob Nally addressing snow removal and water storm drains. Two, a construction permit from the state fire marshal. Three, a letter from Don Webster, the state Elizabeth fire chief. Four, a response to the site plan review. And five, a letter from Michael McGovern, Cape Elizabeth Town Manager, addressing the town's intent to enter into contract with DC Associates Inc. of Cape Elizabeth for construction of portables starting June 14, 1988, next Tuesday. I bring this to your attention to request that we be allowed to construct these portables as expeditiously as possible. It is important that we have time to erect them prior to the start of school to move the library reading center into a portion of uh, the new building as well as furniture for a host of other activities. <coughs> I understand your process and requirements, but if there is any way that we can speed up the process so that we can begin our operations by June 14th, it would be appreciated. Sincerely, Dr. Cartier. Um, I think it probably, in this case, would be appropriate for Dr. Pelletier to uh, give a brief presentation. Uh, we cannot use this as a uh, formal site plan review. This is for the purpose of examining what you are presenting, and we will try to aid you in every way. Our presentation will be made by our architect, Robert Armitage. Mr. Armitage, the architect, and uh, what I will do is try and respond to the items on uh, on the section 19.2-9 site plan review. And uh, what I have done is prepared um, a key plan uh, which shows the location of the Pond Cove uh, Elementary School complex here with uh, the abutting property owners. Uh, I think everybody here is, is well familiar with uh, the school complex. Uh, what we're proposing to do is to erect a two-classroom media center uh, temporary classroom facility between the Pond Cove Elementary School, which is located here, and the Lunt School, which is 
in this location here. Um, the town garage is here, the bus garage, the junior high school. Uh, uh, this is uh, the uh, adjacent were listed on the other plan on the item A. The lot dimensions uh, are shown here uh, on what is uh, sheet one and two of the drawings that you have. Um, sheet one was the um, large scale, obviously the site is rather large so that I showed it on a sheet number one. But you will also see on sheet number one the dimensions of the site. Sheet number two also um, addresses that same question. Uh, and has the contours uh, shown as requested um, in the proposal. Uh, again, this is the uh, site plan. The finished floor elevation of the Pond Cove Elementary School. Um, again, this is the proposed addition, uh, our temporary classroom facility and the lunch school. There's a playground in here and another one here. Um, so this is, uh, would give you uh, the site. We are 175 feet from the existing uh, fence line that's here to the building and uh, 60 feet from the uh, access driveway uh, at the, on the site. Uh, that takes care of item uh, E. Item B is the setbacks. Uh, which are designated here as 175 feet and 60 feet. Uh, we will be attaching the buildings to each other, so there will be a common corridor between the Palm and Cove Elementary School and the Lunt School. This is um, the floor plans of the proposed building. This is a floor plan showing the existing Lunt School. And this is sheet number three of the drawings that you have. And this is a, a portion of the Pond Cove Elementary School is shown on those drawings on sheet number three. This gives you a little better idea as to the arrangement of the proposed uh, facility in, a, in its relationship to the elementary school and the lunch school. Uh, again, you can see that we are proposing to have two classrooms in the front of the building uh, and in the back or in the rear of the building towards the playground area there will be a media center. Uh, we're showing a petition there but it's in hopes that we will have this as one large uh, open area for a media center. Uh, no, that, that's not going, it's, it's anticipated depending on the framing system that the contract is proposing to use that that, uh, the way it's set up now, they're proposing to build this with roof trusses that will span the whole thing, which would enable us to take this down. Originally there was going to be just a, a, a folding petition there with a, with a common access door in between, but they're, they're, uh, we're negotiating with a contractor to see if he is in fact going to frame this with uh, long span roof trusses that that space then can be opened up. Yes? Mr. Armitage, um, to my knowledge there has not been a media center at the middle school or the pond school in previous years. Is this a new addition? Uh, no, it's my understanding that, that this is, uh, media center is partly the library, uh, so it will be moved out. Uh, part of the reason for doing this is uh, due to the, uh, a handicapped student and, and needs access, and uh, we would have to take him up into the uh, Pond Cove, uh, uh, into the elementary building, or uh, up into the other building, and they're going to move that down so that now that these buildings can use this as a 
library media center, if you will. That's an excellent improvement. Thank right. you. Before I do change this, one of the things that we wanted to mention is that for those of you who are not familiar, the school department did uh, make the Pond Cove school complex this last year accessible to the handicapped. And one of the things that we are, one of the things that this uh, temporary facility will do will, will facilitate uh, access from this entrance way. Uh, by coming into a vestibule area here, we will ramp this so that this student can have also have access to this playground down here. Whereas before there were stairs here and all of his access was done at the portico between the uh, uh, kindergarten building and, and the Pond Cove School, all the elementary school. I'm not sure what the terms are. But, and, and that's also true here in uh, this area here. Uh, we intend to ramp the corridor down so that uh, this will be accessible as well and then we'll have a ramp here going out into the back area so that the playground then will be accessible uh, to this student. What this is uh, just uh, uh, in response to one of the questions as to the uh, building, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the elevation, existing elevation of the Pond Cove Elementary School and again this is the Lunt School and the uh, office areas of the Lunt School and then this will be the temporary uh, facility here with uh, a vestibule area here and here. Each one of the classrooms on the front as well as the media center at the rear which would be basically the same elevation uh, in reverse. Uh, in other words, this basically is symmetrical. So if you tipped it over, you'd be looking at the front of the back. It, where you're actually looking at it from the entrance drive right now. Um, and there will be doors also directly from the classroom so that th the students can exit directly from the facility to the exterior. And that will be the same on the, uh, from the media center. Uh, what I've done here is, is cut a wall, uh, cut a section, a longitudinal section through the buildings for those of you who are familiar, this is the Pond Cove School here, and there are steps that go down. This is approximately the existing grade at this level here. This is the Lunt School, which is a two-story school, which is uh, has exit uh, at grade level down towards where the ball field is, where Holman Field is. That exits at the ground level, uh, but there are stairs. Uh, it's a split-level foyer. Uh, which uh, does not enable access. However, there is access there, but by putting these classrooms in this location, we will have the facility, and we don't have to concern ourselves with whether uh, the student is in this facility or not. This building will act as a common classroom building for this grade level. Um, now, this just shows, the reason I showed this was that this floor level of the temporary facility will be at the same elevation as the Pond Cove Elementary School. So you'll come out and, and walk directly into this facility and then this is to show the ramp which will then uh, grade down to the entrance vestibule uh, between the Lunt School and, and this new proposed building. Unfortunately, you don't happen to have a copy of this because I just found this in, in researching uh, the program um, and in discussing it further with the superintendent and uh, Mr. LaBelle, we found uh, um, another uh, drawing which was done by Mitchell Duane, which was a result of the playground construction in this area as, as well as down in, in this area here, which was uh, done last summer. Um, what this shows, again, what I have tried to do here is, is show the construction of the new building of the temporary classroom. And again, I have to repeat that this is temporary. It's uh, anticipated that this will be used three to, four, uh, three to five years. Um, there is a, um, 
asphalt paved drive that comes down here. This area in, in this location here is presently a paved playground or, or uh, exercise area or whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, it's, this is paved so that as far as uh, some of the concerns in site plan review with regards to uh, the landscaping and the storm water, uh, it's uh, my opinion and, and as presently this is an impervious surface which means that the water presently is running off either in this direction, uh, there are catch basins, uh, one of them is right here and there's another catch basin here which takes that storm water or surface water and carries that away. Um, and then, of course, the rest comes down along the lawn and then distributes itself uh, down the drive. Uh, and there's another catch basin down at the corner of the, of the uh, parking area. So that, that would eliminate this problem of, of, of the concern with the stormwater. There would be no, no more increase of stormwater because of the roof structure than there would be of the impervious uh, playground area, if you will. Um, and, and these areas here are the two ramps. It's my understanding, and I, I'm probably speaking a little out of turn here, because uh, I don't know this for fact, but I, I've discussed it with, uh, and it's anticipated that we're going to try and extend this drive down into this playground so that the student that is going to be in this building, uh, the handicapped student, will then have access in a paved area down to this to this playground area for his grade level. I, I just recognizing that this is one grade level and, and this is another grade level uh, in this total complex. Uh, this is uh, K1 and uh, this is the second grade and I believe this is uh, third and fourth, uh, I'm not sure, third, third grade. So that, that's the intent. Uh, this is a, a different grade level. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the site, uh, obviously, you know the library and the annex, which was uh, just completed recently. This line here shows the property line, and this also is a fenced-in area. Uh, for, if you want to see where this area is, uh, you, can, you can see this uh, actually from this line here and back to this corner of the building is fenced in. Um, as far as outside lighting, uh, we don't propose any yard lighting as such. Uh, as far as uh, lighting on the building, uh, we would have uh, lights at the doorways which would uh, illuminate the entrance, entrances uh, and there would be no sign so we just, uh, and my letter, I just mentioned that uh, that's not applicable. The landscaping, because it's temporary, we didn't anticipate um, adding any landscaping uh, as far as uh, in the area of the building as such. Uh, the tree that's here, you know, we in hopes to salvage and keep that. Uh, it's uh, almost a landmark, uh, so we are planning to keep that. Uh, obviously, any landscaping that's out in this area, we would uh, continue. So I guess I just just a matter of whether you have questions. Uh, I haven't got, I don't have the exact uh, specifications on all of that, Alice. It, it would be normally a, an R30 is what we're shooting for, which would be in the plenum over the, over the ceiling. So it's anticipated that the ceiling will be insulated with an acoustical ceiling and above that in the trust area, not up in the roof itself. It plan, we plan on wood trusses with a, a shingled roof so that the insulation will be over the top and not, you know, on the ridge line. Mm -hmm. So that it would be over the ceiling line, and but that would be an R30, and we planned on using two by six partitions with uh, six-inch bat insulation in the in the walls. I I didn't I, I being site plan review, I didn't bring all of those specifics with me. I'm sorry. Uh, are there some other questions, Mrs. Guthrie? Uh, what part has the town engineer played in this process? Have you discussed any of this, the drainage, et cetera, with him? Uh, yes, uh, the drawings were submitted to uh, Mr. Malley and he's reviewed them and um, there was two questions that arose. One was on the storm water drainage, which I know um, the board would be concerned about, and one which I hadn't given too much thought to but which was brought to our attention was um, the snow removal. Um, 
in the fire chief, and there is a letter, I believe, in, in the, par, uh, in the uh, packet that you got this evening, and, and it's anticipated that this will be plowed so that that snow will be removed so that the fire department would have access here and, uh, and that the storm water, as I mentioned, would be going into these drains, and Mr. Malley is, is comfortable with that, so he doesn't see any problems. But he has looked at it, and the fire chief has looked at it. Uh, the, the floor plans, as you saw them, and the elevations have been submitted to the state fire marshal's office, and with exceptions of some electrical drawings that we have to resubmit, which show the exit lights and emergency lights and fire pull stations. Uh, those, you know, we received approval from him on that, and I, I believe that has been included in your packet. Yes, so, yes. I just didn't see anything from the town engineer and wondered what part he had played. Uh, well, we have a, in our ordinance, unless there's 10,000 square feet uh, being altered, we don't need to need really to get that. into detail. And, uh, and how many square feet do you estimate? In round figures, is around 3,300 square feet in round figures. But in any case, we, you know, I realize that that's a concern. So we did, we did submit them to him so that he would be comfortable with what we're doing, even though I'm saying it's an impervious playground now, we got an impervious roof over the top. I, I realized that this is a concern, and so I said, well, we'd better at least run it by the, because there will be a runoff, there's no question about it. Thank you. Other questions? Is, is this a building that is temporary only because it's intended to be removed at the end of approximately five years? Is that the only reason, or is it temporary because of something to do with the construction? No, the, the, it's temporary also in construction. It's an, we're proposing, and the reason they would like to get started a little soon, and there's a concern about doing work while, while school is still in session, but, but the, the thinking is that the building is going to be constructed on sauna tubes, and so they will go in and drill those sauna tubes and set those tubes and, and then the, the building will actually be set on top of sauna tubes. So there will not be a foundation around the perimeter as you know it as such. Is that the only difference that uh, distinguishes this from a uh, permanent building? The fact that the absence of the foundation? Uh, is there anything else in the construction that uh, would be different than a permanent building? Yeah, well, I, you know, these are different approaches to it. Yes, probably we would have had a concrete foundation. We would have had a concrete slab and instead of a, it's going I to be... I meant other than the foundation. It would be built, well, well, we would have like a concrete slab, floor slab system. The, 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 the flooring will be on uh, uh, wood truss, uh, wood joists. So, and it will be built up and insulated. So they'll basically be, uh, for all practical purposes, like a, uh, um, anywhere from a foot and a half or from a foot to two feet of crawl space, if you will, underneath this building. The, the <coughs> perimeter of the building will go to the ground, but other than that, you... No, I understand your, your, your answer. Other than with respect to the foundation, is there anything, uh, say, with the plumbing, electrical, uh, insulation, any of those kinds of factors that, uh, that are different because this building is only intended to be there for five years? Well, with the, there is no plumbing in the facility. We are extending the fire alarm system from the adjacent building to that building so we can tie it into the uh, central system. But yeah, there, there, is no, there is no plumbing proposed for this. So it's, it's, it's temporary. In other words, we can, it's, it's as flexible as we can design it and make it so that it can be, if we do remove it, it won't affect you know, a major, uh, you know, there's no sewer connections. Uh, the electrical uh, will require a new service into that facility. I don't think that the lunch school does, but I think the Pond Cove school. I'm not sure. No? I'm getting no's. So, and the, so the heat is electric? Yes, it's anticipated right now that the heat will be electric, and that's primarily because uh, the, heating, the heating plant, the central plant for the system is is designed and they feel that it's at its maximum capacity without getting into major changes. So uh, how many additional children do you expect would use this facility then? I'm going to defer that to the superintendent. Probably 50 on the uh, two front sides and the entire 
entire school in the media library center. That would be on the schedule of rotation. And there are no restrooms or plumbing or basements as we used to call them in my right. early days. Doesn't know who to raise their hand. Sounds pretty tough to me. <laughs> Mrs. Gatsby. And and just one more question, Mr. Armitage. What is the exterior material of this temporary building? Will it be aluminum? No, it's a texture 111 plywood. Will there be no lighting over these door stoops, or did you say? Yes, there will. There will be a, a like a, a residential type light at at, at the regular. At this area, there'd just be a regular small light. But in these areas here, where we anticipate public access, there would be a, a, a 50 watt or a 70 watt. I think I, I think I mentioned in my letter to you that there'd be a 70 watt high pressure sodium light over the doors which would light the walkways so at night time the public would have access and view it. Yep. Is, is the bottom or the underside of this structure going to be secured in some way if it's up on sonic tubes it sounds like a magnet for the little kids to go under there. Is there some way uh, that you people plan on preventing that from happening? Yes there'd be a uh, we intend to run a skirt down down to the ground but uh, yes so that, that would be closed off so that we can't get under there and and the bottom of the trusses our bottom of the floor joists will be uh, covered so that we'll hold the insulation in place so that it would be a smooth surface under there too rather than uh, you know there's no way to hold that so that that would be uh, insulated the, the floor joists uh, will be insulated No, uh, then I can only answer that uh, we have uh, recently completed a facility analysis, and the board just received the report finished by the New England School Development Council. Now, the board and the new board will uh, have to spend some time uh, deciding what kind of organization this school system should have for the future, say, 10 years. And then as form follows function, we would put shells around the organization. Now, the, uh, the experts have uh, given the board several alternatives. Those have to be studied and read very carefully. And uh, at this point, we've just received the report. So it's very difficult for me to answer, uh, you know, what'll happen three years from now. But hopefully, we'll engage in a building program that'll solve our problems for some 10 years based on this study. The question was really raised to elicit an answer, and this is my final question, uh, with respect to whether anything to do with this construction uh, can't be undone or removed if your ultimate plans uh, are to, to remove that middle structure and go do something someplace else. Uh, I don't have an idea of the extent of the sonatory or foundation work or whatever. Is it, is it designed so that if in five years the plan is to remove it, you could pretty much uh, do something yes. that would be... Yeah, it could, yeah, it could be removed and, the, and depending upon the depth of the sonotubes, even the sonotubes could be pulled and, and like, like fence posts would be pulled out of there. It's, it's the intent is that it's temporary. There's no question about that. One of the conditions in the site plan review is, is adequate buffering, and so I mm -hmm. guess we'd just like to ask uh, whether you do plan to use any further buffering uh, anywhere around the temporary structure. No, other than the existing um, fence line that is like 175 feet away, we didn't anticipate expending any further monies or funds up and towards. Uh, uh, 
uh, this area here would be the would be the police department, and then um, Mr. Holman's house is in here and it's pretty well uh, treed now. So that we didn't anticipate spending any further monies up in that area. No, that was not a part of the that was not a part of the project nor an intent. Uh, nor was it an intent to do anything uh, around the building per se, because the building um, there are steps that come out here. There's a limited area. Uh, as well as uh, being temporary, you know, it just seems that we're going to end up taking them back out again. Uh, maybe this is more of a question for the school board and Dr. Pelletier. Uh, do you think that the school board would be uh, willing to accept a conditional approval for five years for a return to a site plan review if at the end of five years this were uh, thought to be need to be continued. We think that's very reasonable. Thank you. Uh, are other questions? I have one question uh, about the, the, the appearance of the skirt in the base of the building. Right. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you have that because I think we solitudes by themselves could be could make the building look very temporary and, and not particularly uh, attractive. Um, is that skirt going to appear to be a permanent part of the building? Yeah, we, we, were, we sort of been discussing that with the contractor as to whether to have like a lattice work or whether to again extend the, the texture 111 down to the, uh, the elevation of the ground. It's really going to Part of that's going to depend on how that works in relation to the to the grades. Um, yes, that, that that's pretty much the intent is to take that down and make it look like it it belongs right there. No question about it. We don't want to have you know little creatures running around and you know and kids throwing baseballs under there and then going after them and things of that nature. Yeah. I suppose I shouldn't put anything in anybody's mind. Huh? <laughs> no traps. No yeah. traps. Um, <laughs> yes, Mr. Butler. One question. Do you anticipate the addition to generate any additional need for parking? No. No. That no additional I, personnel, school personnel will be required? Not to my knowledge. And, and you know, and obviously the, the, the 50 little students come in a bus, so I... And are, all the unloading and so forth is done up at the head. Uh, the uh, it's my understanding uh, that that the um, it's anticipated next as of next year that all of the student offloading will be done at the portico, rather than now. Um, is that at the at the front? That's that's in this location. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. the, the, as I understand it, well, those of us. Who children going here, uh, they used to get off here and enter the school in two directions and then at, enter here. And it's my understanding that now the, the program is such that they want to have the students enter in this location, so they're going to uh, keep all the students here. Any other comments or questions? Uh, I think this is a, a very solid, good <laughs> review. Uh, we cannot, unfortunately, legally uh, take any action tonight because this is a, a workshop, but I would like to suggest an option if the planning board it would be willing uh, to set a special meeting next week uh, for Thursday, the, uh, 16. the 16th, mm -hmm. uh, to consider action and approval on this site plan of view. Mrs. Uh, Gassier. Madam Chairman, I think there might be a problem with that because according to the letter from our town manager dated June 7th, the money will be appropriated by the town council formally on the 13th of June and it seems that after that approval, the school board wants to sign a contract on June 14th to complete the work by August 15th. So that means that we'd have to set a meeting sooner than that if that's the deadline. 
Um, I understand that you do want to, that they do want to start building on the uh, 14th. I don't uh, know. We have to give some public notice that we are considering this. This is a I legal see. problem. Mm -hmm. um, is there another date that you want to suggest that would give proper notice or time? I think it's required in this case. Seven days? Usually seven days. Which I can't call the page until tomorrow, and it's usually two or three days before we're getting in. Uh, this is the seven, the earliest would really be the 15th. I think we would have to uh, just alert the town council that, that this is the soonest that we really could take our action. And uh, I, I think you're right, Joe, that we could, they would have to make it conditional on our approval. I, I, I really think that everybody is uh, very appreciative of your need and understands the rush, to understand your uh, time schedule, um, and uh, we're sorry that the process mm -hmm. wasn't uh, thoroughly explained earlier so that uh, we could have acted a little quicker. Uh, would that be agreeable with planning board members, per, let's say 5.30 on Thursday, would that be agreeable with the applicant? And we'll hope to have a very quick, quick meeting okay. <laughs> down in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> but it will be a formal meeting. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the 16th, that is Thursday, the 16th at 5.30 here at the town hall. All right. Thank you very much. I think we'll take just a two-minute break, please.
Uh, to keep in the spirit of our usual commodious atmosphere for workshops, uh, we will now retire to the downstairs and uh, continue our workshop there without the benefit of uh, lights and action and cameras. All right. And you're all invited. This doesn't mean that we're excluding you, but if you...